Hi, my name is John Parnell from the Max Planck Institute for Solid State Research here in Stuttgart, Germany. However, I grew up in Canada, and Canadians and electrons have some stuff in common. Canadians drive a lot. There's a lot of distance between our cities, and to get to the cities, we have to drive on roads. Now you have to remember electrons also move through a wire creating electricity, but electrons have a problem, and as do Canadians. Things get in the way, sometimes it's moose and bears and trees, sometimes it's atoms or fellow electrons creating traffic. They're bumping and bashing their way down the wire, slowing things down, and as the electrons scatter off the atoms, the wire gets hotter and hotter, and then all that heat is wasted energy. Can't we save this energy? In the early 1990s, Canada started solving their traffic problem by building carpooling lanes. If you had two people in your car, you could go on a unique highway just for you where nothing was in your way. Wires can do the same thing if two electrons pair together in what's called a Cooper pair, they can travel through the wire without hitting anything. They enter a state that interacts with nothing else. But we still run into trouble because, similar to Canadians, electrons will argue over the radio or whose favorite coffee shop to stop at. While opposites attract, the same things repel, and electrons want to break apart. The question now is, how do you get electrons and Canadians to stay together? The answer is quite simple. You make it super cold. You make it so cold that if you put two people in the same car, they don't have the energy to get away from one another. Maybe this is why Canadians appear so friendly. It's just too cold for us to move away from one another. And it's the same with electrons. If you make it super cold, like negative 250 degrees Celsius, the electrons don't have the energy to break apart. Now they stay as Cooper pairs, no energy is wasted, no heat is released, electricity moves super fast, it's a phenomenon known as superconductivity, and the potential is huge, saving serious amounts of energy. But how can you possibly use this phenomenon in real life if it only ever works at temperatures much, much colder than even a Canadian winter? As the name suggests, superconductors are super at conducting. They let electricity flow through with zero resistance. We're stuck with the problem that they only ever work in specific cold conditions, but research is being done to see if we can use superconductors in our daily lives. Now, of course, Michaela here isn't trying to make the Earth any colder. Instead, she's trying to learn how materials work in their superconducting state. In order to get superconductors that will work at room temperature, it is important to know why and how they work at low temperatures. One of the techniques that we use here to study superconductors is Raman spectroscopy. In Raman spectroscopy, the sample is hit by a high-intensity laser beam. That light is carefully focused through mirrors, peepholes and lenses until it finally hits the material. It interacts with the material and then bounces back at us. And it is this inelastically scattered light that carries all the material-specific information that we are interested in. For example, information on the lattice vibrations or on the electronic excitations of the sample. With this technique, we can now experiment with different variables to see their effect on superconductivity. So we can apply a magnetic field or an electric field, or dope the sample with more electrons. Or apply a pressure. Applying a pressure to the right kind of material may allow it to exist at different temperatures. We're using diamond, one of the hardest materials in the world, and we're squeezing the sample between two diamonds harder and harder, increasing pressure more and more. And we know that under a pressure of 23 gigapascal, we get the current record for the superconducting transition temperature. This is minus 107 Celsius on a copper-based superconductor. This was still almost twice as cold as the coldest Canadian winter ever recorded, which was in 1947. And it would still require millions of moose all standing on one kilometer of average sized power line to create that kind of pressure. But even if the energy gets where it needs to go, at times it still needs to be stored. Stored in this car, for example, making the switch to electric batteries instead of fossil fuels. With the prospects for a more sustainable world, next episode we'll delve into the Institute's work on energy storage and lithium batteries. So do you mind if we uh, park for a while? Goodbye, John.